I'm expecting to keep this tight and short and crisp. Unlike the default textbook approach where we talk about what cloud computing is, what AWS is and let's say what DevOps is and going by examples, we would reverse the order completely. We will start with an example first. Moving on to the definition of cloud computing and understanding AWS cloud where AWS stands in the world of cloud computing. Moving on to DevOps once again with an example and ultimately talking about the course on how your experience is going to be with us in tech stories. Let's get started with the example first. I'm pretty sure being in the 21st century, you have definitely used at least one among the following services. Netflix, Amazon Prime Videos, Geo Cinema, YouTube, Hotstar, etc. So what's common among all these companies? Yes, all of them are video streaming companies. They stream videos, right? They stream movies, they stream TV shows, web series, and all those things. Now let us just pick up one among them. Let's say we pick up Netflix. The question I'd like to ask you right now at this point, do you know how Netflix works? Well, you definitely do from the user's perspective, at least I'm guessing so. So what are the steps as an end user that you take? First of all, you go for opening up the Netflix application, maybe on your smartphone, maybe on your laptop, on your desktop or whatever device you might be on. Number two, you go for signing up for that or let's say if you already have an account, you try to log into that account, right? Once you do so, then you are presented with a catalog of movies or a web series or, or TV series or TV shows or whatever. And from that, you are supposed to choose one among them. Once you choose one among the videos, they start streaming in front of you. That's the flow, right? All right. Now let's try to break it down from the... A uh, little bit from the IT perspective, right? Irrespective of whether you belong from the IT background or not, I'm pretty sure this will start making sense to you. See, when the first time you go to the Netflix application or maybe on your desktop, you write down the URL of Netflix website or on your phone or on your laptop or whatever. The first thing you do, I think you'll agree with me, you go and you hit the Netflix server. Don't you think so? Yes we go and hit the Netflix server. I think you have heard about this. When you try to, let's say, type facebook.com on your phone, on your laptop, and you do not get it, people say the Facebook server is down. That means there is some sort of a server associated in this entire process. So when you first hit on your browser, netflix.com, you go and you hit the server of Netflix. Once you reach the Netflix server, then it returns you with a page asking for your credentials. You have to write down your username, your password. This username and password is once again returned back to your server, which cross checks this credential information with something known as a database. There is a database maintained of the users who are the valid users of Netflix. Against that database entry, they match your credentials. If there's no match, you have no luck. But once there's a match, you immediately get an access to the catalog of movies or let's say TV series or TV shows depending upon what kind of a plan you have purchased from them. Now from this catalog, once you choose a video, it no longer goes back to your database. It goes to something known as a storage device. Databases are very poor while storing big media. They cannot really handle big media in a nice way. So we have got a separate storage device for it. In the storage device, all these movies, TV series, or whatever the thing is that is kept over there. As soon as you select one from the application that reaches that particular storage device, pulls the movie or the video or the web series for you, and ultimately that is displayed on your screen. This is on an overview, the flow of how Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime Videos, Hotstar, these things typically work. Now, if you notice, we have talked about two things over here, two very, very important things. We talked about servers application servers, database servers, but they're ultimately servers. And the other thing that you have talked about is your storage device, where your videos were being stored. Now understand this fact that when you've got a server, you've got a storage, you've got several servers in fact, you try to, commu you try to set up a communication among all of them. We are essentially talking about setting up a network. So a network is a communication channel between multiple devices, right? You take all these devices together, we ask them to communicate, therefore we set up a network. Networks, servers, and storage. These three things together form the basis of your IT infrastructure. And when you try to set up this IT infrastructure on a very large scale, which will be accessible 
irrespective of which geographical location you belong to, irrespective of which time of day or night you are trying to access it. Therefore, not bound by your geography, not bound by your time is known nothing but cloud computing. Yes, that's the definition of cloud computing and congratulations, you just now knew what cloud computing is. So once again to define formally, cloud computing is all about setting your IT infrastructure which once again will be the driving force for your business. To set up your IT infrastructure on a place which can be accessed over the web without any geographical or time barrier. So I believe it was enjoyable to understand how Netflix works, isn't it? Netflix is by the way on AWS cloud. Amazon Prime Videos is on AWS cloud. YouTube by the way doesn't belong to AWS cloud and it is in turn present on the Google cloud. Now that we have understood what the basics of cloud computing is, let's try to dive into a little bit more specifically onto AWS. Now AWS, which stands for Amazon Web Services, is the cloud solution from Amazon. Yes, it's the same Amazon company that supplies your e-commerce needs. They have come up with a cloud solution known as AWS and it is by far the most popular and the most chosen cloud computing platform by the experts in this industry. All over there are thousands of cloud companies, but AWS alone has got a market share of more than 50% at the time of making of this video. AWS is a very flexible yet scalable infrastructure based model of cloud computing, widely used for variety of solutions in the present day industry. It's extremely easy to start working with AWS cloud. Anybody with absolutely zero level of experience can start working with AWS, not in a few months, not in a few weeks, but in a few days. Yes, you heard me right. It can be done. The way we need to get started to work with AWS cloud is that we need to sign up for an AWS account, which is once again free of cost and it remains free of cost for most of the services for one year of time from the date of your registration. Let's get into our screen and let's see how we can get an account with AWS. So this is the official website of awsamazon.com. You can see the URL goes like aws.amazon.com. Now once you come over here, you'll find this orange button which says create an AWS account. Once you click on that, you will find out the sign up page is loading. And you can see it immediately tells that it is 12 months of free tier access. In our course, we shall be seeing that which all services fall under free tier and what all limitations are applied on them. You have to write down your email address. You have to write down your password. Make sure your password follows the policy that is mentioned over here. And after that, you have to write down an account name. So this account name can be anything of your choice. And you can click on continue. Once you do so, you have to give your credit card information or you can give your debit card information if you want to and your address. And once all these things are done, your AWS account is ready. And after that, you can sign in by writing your registered email ID and the password. And that's it. Congratulations. You're all set to go with AWS right now. So that was fairly easy, isn't it? Just to talk about a little bit of features of AWS cloud, you get an automated networking solution. You get your EC2 instances, which are the virtual servers on cloud. You get S3, which is the storage solution I was talking about in our first example. You get an immense flexibility in setting up your own auto scaling services, which means that your infrastructure can automatically scale up or scale down depending upon the load that it is experiencing. And yes, we do run these techniques in our course. We have got an automated monitoring solution. We have got DNS servers, database servers, migration services, and whatnot. AWS is the global market leader in the field of cloud computing on the domain of IT infrastructure. 